Liverpool have beaten West Ham 5-1 in the Carabao Cup, Cody Gakpo got a brace, so did Diogo Jota, and Salah got one as well, you know, just as the cherry on top. Can't forget that Chiesa assist as well. What a start to our Carabao Cup defence. I think we learned a lot from that game, so let's just go through five things that we learned from that game. Number one is Joe Gomez. Joe Gomez is a centre-back. I'm not hearing anything else about it. He's a centre-back just because last season, you know, we were struggling in the left-back area. He had to play there. Klopp, you know, saw a solution to the problem and that ended up being Joe Gomez but we've sort of forgotten in that how good Joe Gomez was at centre-back especially during the title run and that is his that is his proper position I thought he was imperious today bar a few scuffles in the box you know that the early goal was kind of bad from everyone really but it was ultimately quite unlucky we probably should have got rid of it but you know it just happened and that does sometimes happen in football but ultimately I felt that Joe Gomez in that centre-back position was rock solid there was so much noise about him going over the summer but it didn't really materialise he was linked to Newcastle and I'm so happy he stayed because he's proven that he is a rock solid centre-back as well as being able to fill in pretty much everywhere across the defence you know right back left back centre back everywhere this one doesn't really need to be put into words because everyone saw Cody Yakpo's performance today it was absolutely electric the, the man was just he looked like a change man he looked ridiculous it was Netherlands Gakpo all over again and I'm so happy for him it looks like Slot has actually found a way to unlock that kind of direct attacking player that we see for the Netherlands so often but we haven't really seen in a red shirt and it's been fantastic every time he's got the ball he's just driven at his defender and he's pretty much beaten them he's just so direct and in your face it looks terrifying to play against i felt really sorry for west ham's left back it looked it looked like an absolute nightmare for him having to play against cody gakpo and it's all just a testament really to liverpool's incredible left wing depth you know because we've got cody gakpo who's on fire but also Luis Diaz. So how um, it's a it's a big problem for Slot that he's going to have to solve. It will be a problem that no manager is really too sad about having. You know, having two banging wingers. You know, playing out of their minds recently at the start of the season. So you know that's a, it's really good that Slot has these options available to him to make. I loved it when Gakpo sort of was heading. He looked like he was heading back towards our goal to defend and play the ball back, but. He kind of dummies it out and he turns back on the defender and suddenly he's just in. He's just in and that's how he gets his second goal. It's, it was a fantastic performance from him and I could not be happier for him. Third thing we've learned is that Simakas is not better than Robertson. I know there are going to be a lot of people thinking, you know, obviously he's not better than Robertson. You know, he's he's the he's a squad player. And but there was so much chat online about how this guy was better than Robertson. You know, how Robertson had sort of dropped off towards the end of last season and how Simakas should come in and take his place and. He did, but we've seen after this performance and after the previous one against Milan, where he started, that Simakas is a fantastic player, but he is a squad player and he is not a replacement for Robertson. He is there for rotation and that's about it really. He can do a job, but he's not that level. He is not on Robertson's level. That's that's the truth. That diving header though that I played at the start, that will go down in history. That was, that was really Phil Jones-esque and it made me really happy. Number four is Curtis Jones. Being overheated in my opinion, I just don't think, I don't see the reasons for it. I really don't. He had a solid game today. You know, he's a squad player ultimately, and that's what he was. And for a squad player, I thought he was absolutely fine. There is no reason to be singling him out for a few times or he's a bit slow on the ball, you know, and he hasn't played those games. He hasn't had that match experience in this season. So I think the criticism is just really harsh. And I, I do think he had a good game. You know, he made a fantastic pass for Jota's second goal. And, you know, sometimes he looked like he was really able to dribble himself out of those difficult areas. And, you know, he's not going to be starting. You know, we've got McAllister now. We've got Ryan Gravenberch seemingly having taken those positions for themselves. Really, the only place you see Curtis Jones getting minutes is, you know, for Sobers Lie, really. But I really just think the hate is a bit much for someone that hasn't had too many minutes this season. Final thing we learn is that Kelleher is obviously the best second keeper in the world. This man, you cannot beat this man. The amount of saves he's making just on a match-to-match -match basis are just outrageous. Some of these saves, you know, would make Allison. you know, Allison's looking over there, you know, looking nervous, you know. He's obviously not going to take Allison's spot, but as a shot stopper, Kelleher is all you could ask for. He is fantastic for a second keeper. You know, he's got things to work on. He's got his passing, his playing out the back, maybe some distribution, but his shot stopping is unquestionably fantastic, and I think he really deserves praise for that. Allison was out for so long last season, and it looks like Allison could have another kind of injury ridden season. And who better to come in to take his place than Kelleher? He's been fantastic as he's stepped in so far. Some general thoughts on the game that I wanted to give. I thought Nunez has really improved defensively. The amount of tackles he seems to be making, you know, coming back from an attacking position 
getting there, making those interceptions and contributing defensively, I think it's fantastic. Connor Bradley didn't have his best game, but that's okay. He hasn't had the minutes like Curtis Jones. So I'm, I'm really willing to be sympathetic towards these, these players that haven't really had too many minutes in a competitive environment this season. So that was fine for me. He did have a few a few moments where he looked a bit on edge, but he was he was fine and not too bad. Thanks for checking out this video though. If you like that, maybe check out some of these videos on screen, hopefully that I've put in now. And yeah, maybe I'll see you next time.